My name is Alexander Little. Uh, I don't really go by any pronouns. It's nothing I've really got into yet. But I uh, form out of the city of Atlanta, uh, and I'm a goat rancher, and I also have a herbal farm. So I provide nothing but pretty much herbs. I do grow produce, but they're mostly root vegetables. How did you access land? What were some challenges you faced? Once I was working underneath so many farmers, I was able to get information from the farmers that have been in the game for five plus years on what was coming available, who was leaving out, who was coming in, uh, what, what properties were coming available, uh, what farmers were moving out of the state as well. And uh, once I started to get uh, wind of that information, I was getting in that information from about four to five different farmers that I had worked with. So that expanded my uh, access to land, so to speak. Uh, and once I realized that I knew more than more, uh, most other farmers that were coming up or beginning farmers, it became apparent that, hey, I have an opportunity to help other individuals get access to these properties where they may not know that information yet. And the biggest key was really just beating other people to the punch as far as knowing what was going on and, and uh, involving the people that I knew personally through the Farmers Coalition, as well as uh, the South Fulton Farm Bureau, uh, that, you know, there was this opportunity and if, if, if you wanted it, hey, let me know so I can start to put things in place. I do still farm cooperatively now. Uh, right now, uh, there's one farm location out of Buckhead. Uh, it's a land lease purchase, or it's not a land lease purchase, it's a land lease agreement. Uh, and this family is extremely wealthy and they like to access farmers so that they can get their uh, land conservation tax write off, which is fair. Uh, however, it is not a fully inclusive property. Uh, so there's a house on the property, but farmers aren't allowed to stay there because they Airbnb the property out. Uh, and if we ever want to have an event, we have to make sure that there's nobody that's staying at the Airbnb to actually host an event, which to be honest, we could really host at least one event a month and really help sustain the, the, the money that we spend just to have crops put in the ground. Uh, it was my first time looking to get out of farming underneath the urban farmer and to move into a cooperative space. Uh, there was no real concrete understanding on how the time and money would be split and how much time you put in, how many crops you planted versus what you got back from your sales. And to be quite honest, most of what we did with our crops was donate them. Uh, so we didn't really have a name for ourselves yet. And the marketing was tough. Uh, moving into that, for, or in that first year, I attempted to bring in another farmer that was from the actual area where we were farming cooperatively. And the farmer that I initially had and the farmer from that area did not get along. So when they butted heads, it was unfortunate because that was our key to marketing. And unfortunately, we weren't able to keep that relationship going until the initial farmer left. Uh, and the secondary farmer that was brought in from the area uh, is now the one who's there farming cooperatively uh, along with me now. Uh, and the CSA that he has is quite strong. Uh, he has about 20, 25 CSA members uh, and two restaurants that he sells to. Uh, me, myself, I'm not very outgoing. <laughs> so uh, I pretty much I have a small CSA of about seven people within my neighborhood, which is not in Buckhead. <laughs> It's, it's in Southwest Atlanta. So there was an MOU at a couple of the farm locations. Um, however, the MOU didn't quite fit what I wanted to do personally, but as a cooperative, it would work just because it wasn't just me. Uh, so the one farm location in Buckhead again, uh, they wouldn't allow on seven acres. They would not, they didn't want you to have animals on the property, uh, which, you know, it was a bit of a turnoff, but at the same time, it was, it was their part of the agreement. So, um, and I was honestly, it was pretty much the same MOU from the previous farmer that they had, uh, which they had a much more established farm farming operation and he had employees as well. So that was, it wasn't quite the same makeup and organization had to, uh, 
kind of take a back seat and we just really had to figure out how we were going to get this land to work for us instead of us working so hard on the land just to get it up to speed to where we needed it. Um, and it's also in the floodplain. So if it rains a lot, then you, you, you're liable to lose a lot of crops, which was one of the first, one, which was one of the main reasons I initially wanted to have insurance uh, just to protect us. But yeah, insurance was the number one thing because that's what a lot of the owners were requiring. Uh, but I also knew that in order to legitimize your operation, you definitely had to have insurance as well. If you wanted to be a part of a market, you had to show proof of insurance, uh, which, you know, that's, that's it's, it's seasonal. However, it's uh, the bulk of where your money comes from in an urban ag scene. How secure does your access to land feel? It's not that secure. Uh, not owning the land really, it, it gets to be a little stressful. Um, for instance, I would like to use my goats to clear all the brush and all the overgrowth after we do our seed saving trials. Um, however, if animals aren't allowed on that property, you just have to, you have to use a weed whacker and a tiller over again. And, and disturbing the soil even more and you're losing a lot of the beneficial properties that you've already built up in that soil. Uh, and I'm a huge, huge uh, advocate for uh, crop rotation or uh, pasture rotation, as I call it. But, uh, what advice do you have for other farmers looking to purchase land? They know what you want first. And uh, as far as the finances and whatnot, I mean, you'll figure that out as time goes along. 